and welcome to Fathoms Deep, a Black Sails podcast. From Common Room Radio, I am Liz Stevens. And I'm Daphne Olive. Season finale, Daphne. Oh my god. This was such a great episode. Edge of my seat, second time around, losing my mind, a great episode. <laughs> Isn't it true? I don't even know how many times I've seen it. Like, I know I've watched it many times. I've showed it to other people. I know uh, our friend Usagi Biker came over and I made her like Mm -hmm. she and I had to watch both this and the season three one because I was just so excited. Oh, Um, man, I bet. And still I freak out every single time. Yeah. (laughs) It's It's so so good. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't have a dull moment. The pacing is perfect. It's so fantastic. And I... You know, when we first started this, I was kind of lamenting the fact that I couldn't just watch it as often as I want, because that's part of the thing is that I watch it right before we record. And so it's pretty fresh in a lot of ways. But this just, I mean, it was equally compelling, maybe even more so the second time, because I had this, like, I had an idea of how it was all going to go down. But gosh, it's just so good. I'm so impressed. This show. I know. This show. And this episode. This this is, Yeah. yeah, this... Yeah, it's either this or the season three finale are are my favorite episode, and I can never decide yeah. which one. They're both. Well, and remember I had told you before when we were hanging out this week because you were in town in Oklahoma I City, was. which was so much fun. But I, I told you then that I don't always remember which episodes are the finales because I burned through them so fast. Like mm-hmm. even though these big epic things happen, and I, it should be obvious that it was the finale, it's still like those moments don't necessarily stick out in my head. So today there were two moments that I was like, oh my God, that's this episode that have stuck with me all this time, which were of course, Jack and Anne, you and I are going to yeah. be partners until they put us in the Ugh. fucking ground, which yeah. is a great line. And so indicative of their characters. But I thought for certain that was season three sometime. So that surprised me. And I was so happy to see it. And then Silver losing his leg. Ugh. I Like, I knew it was coming, but I wasn't thinking about it. And then all of a sudden we were there. And I was like, oh, yeah. my God, it's that moment. Yep. Yeah. And mm, I think for a lot so of people, good. that was earlier than they expected. I mean, now it's yeah. funny. now Now that we know that there are four seasons... I mean, I think mm-hmm. it's a little bit easier and I'm going to have some stuff to say. That's right. It's exactly mid-season. Right. Or mid, mid-story, mid-show. rather, I should say. Right. We're mid-show. Mm-hmm. So I feel like, uh, yeah, I'll talk about that a little bit now. And I think I'll try to save some of my comments for next week. Um, next week, we're going to mm-hmm. be doing our season two wrap up and we're going to be doing it again with Lauren Sarner. Which is so exciting. I know. It's so exciting. It's really, really fun for us to chat with her. And she knows so yeah. much about this show. She uh, knows so much. Plus, she's delightful. Yes. So, so yeah. Which doesn't so I, hurt. <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try to save some of, or not, because we have a lot to talk about next week, too. Just There's so much to talk about season. anyway. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry. We won't run okay. out of things to say about black sales anytime soon. <laughs> I don't think there's any chance of that. <laughs> really, really not. Um, mm. Oh, yay. That's, that. see, for me, the, well, I love both of those moments. Well. I don't love Silver losing his leg, but we'll talk about oh, it's what it's a I great do. moment of storytelling, though. It yeah. is incredible, incredible. And it's, yeah, we, we'll get to that later in this episode. But yeah, this is such a pivotal episode for Silver. And I, I, I do. I think I've said this before. Like, Silver's arc is for me just really mm. so fascinating. Like, it's, I, love, I love Flint's story, but I think by the end of season four, the thing I will have loved the most, and I, I've gotten hints of it through season three is will be Silver's arc is just spectacular. Yeah. Um, but for me, the big like insane thing was Vane when he when he. Yes. I Vane is awesome in this episode. I, this is where Vane comes into his own. If you don't uh, love Charles Vane by the end of this episode, I don't really know what's wrong with you. Yeah. You might to need to honest. see a doctor. <laughs> But I swear it was like the first time I watched it, it it was like I understood how some people react to sports, like the people who are really fanatical about sports. Like oh, when he yeah. raised his arms in the air and then those cannons yes. I was just like <gasps> And I, I might have actually like <laughs> jumped out of my seat. I don't remember, but I kind of feel like doing that yep. every single time because I'm just it's so exhilarating. It's so powerful it and amazing. It is exhilarating. So powerful, so exciting. I was watching it with Sarah actually this time from uh Disney Princess Deathmatch. She was sitting with me, my best friend Sarah. So she was losing her mind also. She loved that moment. She was just like, Oh my God. Yeah. It was very cool. 
Yeah. Oh, I wish I'd seen that. That would have been great. Um, okay. Well, oh, I have a few things I want to talk about. Uh, we brought up the season to wrap. So that's next week. Uh huh. We did do our Ask Fathoms Deep video uh, when we were we together. Did, when was I was a lot in of Oklahoma, fun. When I was in Oklahoma City and we did manage to do it on video. Um, we, we, we had been having a very festive weekend, but I think we're coherent still. Woo! <laughs> yes, we did have a festive weekend. Yes. Hashtag uh, hangover week. Yeah, seriously. Uh, but yes, we did answer almost all the questions. I did just catch one today. Sorry, Kelly, one of your questions. Um, but we uh, we had a lot of fun doing it, and we still need to edit it a bit, and then we'll get it up on to Patreon. So it's not too late to become a patron on Patreon. Give us that website again. Very simple. Patreon.com slash Common Room Radio. And you'll be able to see us uh, drinking scotch and answering people's questions of all sorts. That's right. <laughs> Including who would we marry, screw, and have as a drinking buddy from the show. And yep. we know you're curious. We do know you're curious. And actually, there have been a lot of speculation on Twitter. So if you find that sort of thing amusing, it's it's there. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> this show... This episode absolutely solidified all of my choices, by the way. <laughs> Every one of them. I was like, yes, I have chosen well. <laughs> Excellent. I love that. Yeah. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. uh, yep. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty solid in mine as well. Uh, and, <laughs> and then the last thing is uh, when this episode comes out, it will be Monday. And the Friday after that, I will be going to New York Comic Con. <gasps> I'm and, so jealous. I, I know, could and die. Liz won't. And I'm so sorry, mm -hmm. Liz. I so it's wish you okay. could be there with It's okay. It's all right. Toby Schmitz can't make it either. So Yes. Yes. Toby Schmitz is also, will also not be there. Um, Maybe and, we'll just Skype each other in solidarity. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Liz and Toby can hang out while, uh, while right. the rest of us are at New York Comic Con. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, That'd yes. be the life. And then we will put mm -hmm. together so, uh, a special podcast about that. I'm not sure what any of my experience there will look like. So I don't know how long it'll take us, but we will do our best to get yeah. that out quickly after that. Um, mm -hmm. Very so exciting it. stuff. Let's get into this episode. All right, let's roll. Oh! All right, so we have a lot of different storylines going on here at the same time, and they're all amazing. Mm -hmm. And I thought we would do this breakdown. I wanted to start with Abigail, uh, with Abigail mm -hmm. and her father, with Peter Ash. Uh, and then we will go to NASA, where we will visit with Max. And then we'll go to the Colonial Dawn and see what's up with Jack and Anne. And then we get to the really heavy stuff. Then we get to Charlestown. Hmm. Yeah. And I wanted to discuss basically Vane and Flint together because I really feel like their storyline is one storyline here. And then Okay. Just, yeah. Yeah, right? And then even though yes. part of it's part of it's on the ship and part of it's in Charlestown, but uh I felt like that's one storyline. And then the last one is to discuss uh mostly Silver, but Silver and Billy. Uh while mm -hmm. they're on while they're still on the fucking warship. <laughs> Uh, yes, indeed. So, yeah, that's a lot of stuff. But there are a lot of it's also just like amazing action. So we're going to have mm -hmm. a lot to talk about. But it's not as much like dialogue as usual. But it's really, really important stuff. The, the dialogue that wasn't here was great, though. I have a lot of quoted lines. I mean, yeah. really great stuff. <laughs> and I also noticed, too, that there were a couple of lines that were really quite I don't know how you want to put it, like like literary, poetic, mm -hmm. like beautiful mm -hmm. lines. Yes. And in the hands of a less competent actor, they would have felt clumsy and clunky and overthought. But Toby Stevens can just say anything and you believe him. I know. So that man. impressed. Yep. yep. Ah, so impressed. Yes, he is very good. And this is a very mm -hmm. good episode for him. Well, for yeah. everyone. To this be really honest, for everyone. I feel like this was just yeah. across the board. Incredible. All right, let's get into it. Prepare to board. Hi. All right, let's start with Abigail. Oh, I'm so glad we are. This was a haunting opening. Did right? you notice that her playing on the harpsichord was reminiscent of the chiming clock? <gasps> no, I had different thoughts about it, but I mm, like that. That's what it reminded me of, of a clock striking 12. Oh my goodness, right. 
oh, wow, Liz, I love that. Yeah, yes. it was haunting because of that. It Yeah, it's mm. it's haunting. I mean, for me, huh, I really like that. For me, um, there were two things that I noticed about the piano playing. One, that the only other person we've seen playing piano is Miranda. It's Miranda. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's so true, it, too. Yeah, yeah, I felt so like it, it called was... called back to her. Because you yeah. see a harpsichord and you think Miranda. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Well, also, it's just a reminder that, you know, that they had probably similar upbringings. You know, that there's... that. That's also true. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and the other thing is just, right, just the shock. Just just that, you know, this playing yeah. the same note over and over again and not hearing her father when he started to speak to her was when just... When he first comes in. Poor, yeah. I mean, just this poor girl. <laughs> she was functioning just fine after being kidnapped by pirates, but this is the thing that was just the last straw for her. Yeah, she's had a very stressful time. I mean, she's yeah. been through trauma, like real yeah. trauma. Yes, she has. And fact- she's so strong, though. Yes, yes. This scene is so beautiful. I mean, her words from her journal were already, I, I talked about amazing. how right. um, yeah, how amazing and insightful those words were anyway. But then when she turns to her father and says, you're going to kill Mr. McGraw. And I love that she says... Mr. McGraw and right. not Captain Flint. Absolutely. So important. And you see the kind of shock come over her father's face yep. because he's trying so much to think of him as Captain mm-hmm. Flint and not mm-hmm. as Mr. McGraw. But so ballsy when she says, is it for my welfare that you want me to leave mm. or for your own? Yep. Yep. Gosh, what a strong, I mean, she's so young, but she's a smart, strong character. I really like her a lot. Well, and we watched her go through this process. I mean, she clearly takes all of these um, opinions and this her view of the world and all of these people so seriously. I mean, you could already yes. last episode we already saw that, um, or two episodes ago. See, I've gotten so confused about which is happening. Which episode. it's okay, yeah. Um, the thing I wanted, I I wrote down next to her name in my notes that she's our truth seer. That she's oh, I like that. That she's uh, she worked so hard when she was writing in her journal to get to the truth, mm-hmm. and and then I mean, she just speaks the truth. The, the, I what I love about she the does. way she says you're going to kill Mr. McGraws. It's so direct. It's so exactly what yeah. he's going to do. It's not you know she she just wouldn't allow Peter Ash to like make this prettier than what it was or make it softer than what it was. It's just, you are about to kill the man who saved me. Yeah. She's a realist, I suppose. She's not an idealist. And we've been seeing so much of this show Mm -hmm. through the eyes and the perspective of idealists. And so to suddenly have a realist on our hands, it does. It shifts things and puts them in perspective. Right. That's so interesting because also what she calls him out on is his former idealism is that she says, yeah, you raised me to respect the truth and to see it as the root of all virtue. Ah. So mm. I want, yeah, I want to us to hold on to that idea throughout because there is a lot of discussion of the truth in this episode from a lot of yeah. characters. And I feel like she, she set the tone. She yes. said truth equals virtue in an episode where we're really getting down to like who is good and who is bad and civilization. Yeah. Uh, I think that this is a very interesting perspective to it added to it. And I like that you're saying this as a realist, like that's true. Like she's, she's not talking about like some dream in the sky. She's just talking yeah. about like an, you know, an objective truth about the world is something that's harder to find. But whether or not a person tells the truth in the moment or listens to the truth in the moment is is actually something more concrete. Yes. Yeah, she's really, um, yeah. I, I just love what she's done for the show. I really do. I think at the, her, the place of her character in, in this season has been really so fascinating. And then when he says, I know you're upset, and she gets, then she gets angry. And then she says, I don't yeah. understand. Why are you not more upset? And I love it. Yes. That. It was good. She really is. And she was already doing it in her diary. And we get to hear that right. again when she's saying that stuff. But, you know, what a brave girl. Isn't a she real s- hero in a lot yeah, of ways. Yeah, truly, truly that. And I, I love that. And she says that two people rescued me and brought me here. One is dead. You're about to kill the other one. And then she says, the only man who seems to have committed a crime still works for you. Yep. She's just. Jeez. Yep. 
Flint Flint is doesn't you know Flint does a pretty good job on Peter Ash, but no better job than his own daughter does. I have to say, absolutely. And, she oh yeah, and yep. that's the beautiful thing about adding her as an element here is is you're right. Like Peter Ash can decide to call Flint Flint, although it's interesting. Also, we'll talk about when he does not call him Flint, but mm-hmm. um, but he. His daughter is his daughter. Like he, he can't, he can't escape. He can't escape from yeah. her, from her view of him, from her, from her judgment. I mean, it's it's that mm-hmm. simple. So it's he is forced on some level to understand what he's doing, even though he will try his hardest not to, not to see the reality of it. It is, yeah. It, it is interesting to watch his character. Yeah, because he is just avoiding himself and avoiding and it just yep. trying to get out of it unscathed. But that's what he said last episode, wasn't it? That uh, about like trying to do the least harm. That's right. just that's more important to him. Gosh, civilization right. indeed. Civilization indeed. I I feel like, you know, Abigail in in many ways is like a ray of hope. Like she's from that world. I mean, I think I even have said that for mm-hmm. the past few episodes about her like she is also a product of civilization. We don't know what will happen with her, but at this point, she hasn't rejected civilization. She's calling right. civilization to account from within, mm-hmm. which I think kind of puts her in the same realm as Thomas, who was also a person who was going yeah. to call civilization to account, but from within. Oh, and, yeah. You know what I mean? So like in the mm-hmm. James, in the McGraw Flint kind of, you know, duality, Abigail yeah. would be more in line with 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 McGraw. Yes, you know what I mean. But like, I, I do know. know what you mean. She has uh-huh. so much authority. It's it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. It's and it does. It just sets a great tone. It really does. It does. Yeah. It sets up the whole episode for us. It really does. It really does. All right. So, are you ready to leave Charlestown now, and we'll go to Nassau for a bit? Okay. Yeah. For a bit. Let's do it. Okay. So let's talk about Max in her yellow dress. I know. Do you like that dress? I'm not a huge fan of yellow, but I like, I I mean, she just wears everything so well. It's such an expression of how her status has changed. Right. That's what I wanted to say is that I feel like her dresses are becoming progressively more structured and more, more, yeah. Yeah. And more thoughtful, I suppose. Right. More, um, yeah, they represent her character more. Right. Well, and she has a strong fashion sense and her authority. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Like she wore beautiful dresses in season one. Well, when she got to wear beautiful dresses, but, but Mm -hmm. they, um, they were less structured. They were more, they were more kind of pretty. Not that these dresses aren't beautiful, but they're, but they're just more of like, I feel like the dresses of a person who's, who's showing their status. Yes. Her status has obviously grown hugely. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have uh, Max and Adele talking when Adele's telling Max, um, you know, what's going on on the street. And I found, well, I find all of the Max stuff quite fascinating. uh, And I feel like it could be read a few different ways. So Adele's telling Max and Max sounds like she can't believe that Eleanor is actually gone. And then she says, she's kind of holding her stomach and says, I wonder if they would try a woman for piracy. She still cares very much about Eleanor. But do you think that's what it is? See, that's fascinating. I, I'm i usually the one who argues for that, but I'm not uh-huh. arguing for that here. Because then she asks if she'll hang her. And then Adele says, I, I understand this is difficult to you. And Max says, less than you think. I think that Max here is actually afraid for herself. I think she understands. Oh, yeah. Hang a woman for piracy. She's just Right, because that's what she's doing now. She is, yeah. She's a pirate right now. She is actually, oh. right? She's she's actually she not, is. not an active member of the crew on the on the ship, but she is she is actually a member of this crew getting a cut. Right. Yeah. Oh, man. So I actually think she might be not over Eleanor, but like, but that that's not what's motivating her sense of fear and possibly doom that she seems to have on her face yeah. there. Interesting. Yeah, I like that better. That's good. I like it better, too. And it's also it's supported the next time we see her um, when she's she's just standing there staring. Well, I guess that she's standing there staring at the hanging effigy of Eleanor. And I guess that could mm-hmm. be interpreted both ways. It could be her upset for right. Eleanor. 
But yeah, I again, I saw it that same way that she's just she's looking at a possible future for herself. Yeah, that's very true. In the first part, though, when she's talking to Adele, after she, they have that conversation, she tells her to like basically collect every bit of money that they can scrounge at the brothel. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing is that that has that's in my eyes has kind of two purposes. One, she can buy up all the legitimate businesses. Yep. And again, to bring back our idea of a mafia story in a pirate story. Uh huh. That's exactly what the mafia would do is buy yeah. legitimate businesses that could be fronts. Um, mm -hmm. So so again, we have the same thing. She has the conversation with. Frazier, which she says, I don't plan to make the mistakes that Eleanor made, right? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Uh, and she said specifically, I'm not going to fence for the pirates. I'm not going to do this. And yes. then she says, what does she say? Uh, uh, power is most effective when least perceived. Yes. Well, right before that, she does such a smart move where she, sa she says to him, people like us. And she's kind of pulling him into it's flattery and just very, very smart. So, yeah, so the, it's so interesting. And then she does offer more for the tavern than for every for anything else. And he does ask mm -hmm. her, you know, why is this place so important to you? Yeah. And she doesn't answer. But again, so I, I feel like, you know, we there are a lot of openings here into what might be her motivation. Like, mm -hmm. is she trying to fill Eleanor's shoes? Is she just, you know, collecting power and influence is she just yeah. smart and taking advantage? I mean, you know, this is like people who buy stock right. when stock is low. I mean, this is a great mm -hmm. time to buy everything just simply because everyone's freaking out. So it's not really clear, I feel like, what she's doing. Or is she creating front businesses that could be used to prove that she's not a pirate? It seems to me like Eleanor being arrested really honestly surprised her quite a bit. Why, why do you think, though? Do you think because Eleanor was a woman or just yes. because she always think, saw because she was a woman? Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe also because, she, I mean, again, Flint, Flint addresses this later on and we'll talk about that. Like, I think it's possible that everyone just kind of it never occurred to anyone that that Eleanor could be vulnerable. Right. Well, because even Flint said this is the first time I've heard of NASA without a Guthrie in it. So it might be partly that, but I think. I felt like like my reading of her conversation with Adele is really that it had not really occurred to her that a woman, I mean, maybe a woman like Anne Bonny, but that a woman like Eleanor right. could be tried for piracy. Yeah. Hmm. You know, it's just all these people who are kind of pirate adjacent, who are part yes. of the, <laughs> the pirate, the pirate economy, but not like, mm -hmm. but aren't actually like Charles Vane. I right. think maybe yeah. that hadn't occurred to her. Hmm. So, yeah, we'll see how that plays out. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on to the colonial dawn. Featherstone has a, has a story to tell all of his pipes. I love that. I'm going to tell you the story of a Spaniard named Vasquez. I I fist pumped right then. <laughs> Pretty Isn't exciting. Great? I know. Just when you thought you weren't going to hear that again, I, I love know. hearing it again. It, it made is me so, so happy. great, especially for the finale. What a great throwback! And right, and this is kind of they get the gold. So this has kind of brought that whole, you know, mm -hmm. a Spaniard named Vasquez whole thing has, has gone full circle. But then we have the really important scene. We have Jack goes to meet Anne. Um, mm -hmm. And, and he, he just, he picks up right where they were the night before. I love that. I Which loved was how so he said great. that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So he says, but see, this is also, I, this, there are many times where I pretty much just wrote down whole conversations because I love them yeah. so much. So, yeah, let's discuss what Anne says. So she says, it's such a great speech. It is such a great speech. I actually, I said that and now I haven't actually written down all of it. But she says, you saved me from something horrible. And then she says, I owe you my life, but some part of that you can't owe. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ah. And, yeah, I just, I don't know if there's any way to do this scene justice, to be honest. It's so perfect. It's so perfect. I, 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 that, that's a huge thing to say. There, it, and it's so true. I mean, there's, regardless of what someone has done for you and how they have helped you along the way, she's right. There's a part yeah. of yourself you don't owe anybody. You're Absolutely. true to yourself, the best right. that you can be. Yeah. Right. And then he says, but you can owe it to Max. And then she says, I don't feel I that don't way feel with her. I don't feel that way. Yeah. 
That's amazing, too. How did you read that I, I don't feel that way with her? Because I feel like that could be read a few different ways, and they're all really poignant. Um, well, to me, it was just that, uh, first of all, it started so young with Jack. Jack saved right. her when she was mm -hmm. so young from that awful fate when she was, what, like 13, 14? Right. When, right. Wasn't she 13, I think? I think she said 13. So, yeah. yeah. So she has always had that in the back of her mind that she owed Jack her life. Now with Max, uh, let, how, let's see, Max saved her from letting it come out that she had killed Charlotte and what's his name, right? But she had saved Max also. But she had already saved Max. So yeah, right. and that's what I was going to say is that I feel like for one thing, they're on more even ground and even footing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for another, I wonder if just the the love that she has for Max isn't just, I don't want to say purer, but maybe... It just has less strings attached. Right. Maybe it's than... more adult. Maybe it's a more adult love. That makes sense too. Yeah. Although sure. I, I felt like the when she says I don't feel that way with her, that could actually also relate to not feeling so like bound to her. Also, I mean, it was just interesting. Like in a way, I feel like I don't feel that oh, way with her. Yeah, sure. Could kind of go both ways. Like could say actually mm -hmm. this is an easier love, but it also could could be and I kept watching it like because I really wanted to get to the essence of it and I feel like I didn't and I felt like that's kind of perfect actually that it could go both ways like it could also yeah. mean that that my feelings for her aren't as deep in a way yes yeah sure you see what I'm saying like it could actually yeah. mean that as well which is the same as strings because like not all strings are bad but that's there true. are a lot that's true there are a lot of chords that connect her to Jack Right. And it does. It makes things complicated. And it made it hard for her for years to see herself. And she even says now they see us as two halves of the same coin. Right. Everyone knew my name. And the first thing they said was your name. Right. So that's its own set of challenges and, and was already for Anne. We saw so much where she was struggling with her identity aside from right. Jack. Yeah. But this is where we see her make that choice that who she is in, in her relationship with Jack. She doesn't want to lose all of that when she says you and I are going to be partners until they put us in the fucking ground, mm -hmm. but I can't be your wife. And it's right. only as long as you feel the same way. Like right. she wants to keep a lot of those cords and cut the ones that weren't healthy. Right. Which I think is really great. Says someone who's divorcing, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's like, yeah, you, you can't, you can't just owe somebody your entire being and your whole life. Like there right. are certain things that you're going to have to figure out on your own. Well, and you could argue that that's, I mean, that's, you know, as somebody who's been married forever and not divorcing, mm -hmm. like I, you know, I think that's very healthy actually. Like I think this, that actually yeah. what she's offering him, whether he, whether he gets it at the moment or not, uh, I think what she's actually offering him is much healthier. I'm mean, not against being yes. husband and wife, but I feel like what she's no, saying to him no, is... No, only, no, only because that part, the, the part of her that had the, I guess, the romantic and sexual affection for him is waning. Right. Don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that can also... Yeah, this like I don't remember very written. much about season three, right. but that seems, when she says, I can't be your wife, that's what I see is like... The romantic part is a breakup. That's why he cries, I think. Right. Like, yeah. it's, it's a breakup of the romantic part of their relationship, but a keeping of the partnership and the familial tie yeah. that they have. Yeah. Right. I mean, this definitely could also be read, you know, as a sexuality thing, is that she has yeah. now realized that actually she's gay. That she's gay. Yeah. So I just, I loved it. I mean, I just felt like in any of these readings that we just talked about, the the emotional depth of the of the scene stays the same mm -hmm. because basically what she's saying to him is it can't be the way it has been and yet we are bound forever and that yeah. bond is the strongest mm. and I, I yeah it's just very it's very beautiful it's so I feel like sums up everything we've been talking about with them that that they are so connected to yes. each other that it just doesn't matter ultimately no and they have that great affectionate moment afterwards mm -hmm. where he puts his arm around her and they just look out onto the ship yeah right and i felt or like that the water, was him rather. right she said if you feel the same way and i felt like that was mm -hmm. saying him saying yes I, I do feel the same way yeah or at least i mean I, I don't think that 
he i'll take it yeah right, like i'll exactly. take what what i can get from you because right. he right. does feel those same ties and those yeah those same cords connecting the two of them i think that he's suffering a lot to lose her love yes absolutely. i think that 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 he valued it quite a lot yeah um, and he doesn't have somebody else she has somebody else who's fulfilling that need and he doesn't have that so it's a big sacrifice for him to give it up. That's true. I mean, as much as you can give up something that you don't have. Right. Yep. Toby Schmitz, you're killing us. So good. Yeah. You're so good. <laughs> the one solitary manly tear oh my dripping yeah, down his oh face. My yep. Goodness. Yep. Yep. Yes, you definitely, I think I can speak for both of us. You 100% pull at our heartstrings and we love it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Let's move on to things that are difficult in a totally different way. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> or exil- or maybe exhilarating. I don't know. Actually, the truth is everything that happens in Charlestown is pretty awesome. <laughs> it's just so awesome and epic. Yeah, that's it. That's that that was my Did sad- you notice when we first got there, they th- that sign up and you saw it a couple of times that said suffering is the soil in which faith grows? Yes, I did see that. Actually, I never noticed that until mm. this week. Yes, I totally did notice. What do you think about that? Uh, I hate it is what I think about that. <laughs> I, I hate that. Would. I thought you uh, would. <laughs> yeah. Just in case anyone was curious, not scripture, just something someone wrote and put on. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, noticed, I, noticed, I noticed it and I thought Liz is not going to like this and I would I, not I, have I noticed like it before. Mm-mm. What it reminded me of Miranda yep. when one, uh, one of her very first conversations with Pastor Lambrick was like, maybe yep. love shouldn't be all about suffering. Yep. And she's absolutely right. Yeah. It's bad, bad theology. There are two kinds of bad theology. And one is like, if you're thriving and successful, it's because God loves you. And one is, if you're impoverished and have nothing, it's because you love God. Both wrong. Inaccurate. Just so you know. Totally true. And I did Mm -hmm. notice it. I think I even did a screenshot to show it to you in case you missed it, but I forgot. But then I was like, yeah, there's no way she missed that. No, I I did not miss it. Yeah, (laughs) I did not miss it. All right. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's go. That's actually, yeah, we do see that's pretty soon on, but let's, let's talk about Mm -hmm. Vane first before we get to the trial. Vane. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to say I often wait until we've actually gone through stuff to say what I think about it, but I think that the... The overarching thing that I love, and this is why I wanted to talk about Vane and Flint together, even though they're not always together, is this episode we watch, and we've watched both of them go in a lot of different directions, and we definitely have watched Vane already going this direction, but I feel like what's so cool about this episode is we watch Vane become more like Flint, and we watch Flint become more like Vane. We sure do. Yep. It's awesome. I love watching mm-hmm. that. I really do. Um, okay, so we start out with Vane. And boy, uh, they make strong partners, don't they? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's one yeah, hell of a yeah. team. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when those two went actually pair up, I just, every single time, I just get so excited. Okay, but we're not there yet. Oh, yeah. First, it's exciting. We have, mm-hmm. First, we have Vane talking to Cranky Quartermaster. And he, Cranky Quartermaster, is not on board with this whole save Flint plan. No, (laughs) to say the least. No, he is not. (laughs) He's super cranky. This is like his most cranky episode. Right. Um, And it's so interesting, (laughs) though, to see how Billy is still over here talking about votes. Like Billy is all about the idealistic pirate democracy. Yes. And this guy is just like, what do I have to do to get what I want? Right. Exactly. I mean, I think Mm -hmm. that's a really interesting contrast. Um, but what's most interesting to me in this conversation is how Vane, he's like, why do we care? And Vane talks about, oh, this is the other word. Truth is the one word. And the other word that's really important here is about names, which is, you know, goes yeah, back for to the sure. very beginning of like mm-hmm. pirate theater and the storytelling yep. and all of this. So Vane says, everyone knows Flint's name. Nobody surrenders to a dying thing. Mm-hmm. And then he says... Tell them it's in their best interest, whether they can see it or not. 
And if I ever heard a line that you would have thought would have come out of Flint's mouth. And not Vane's. That's a really good point. Yep. That's a total that Flint one. line. Isn't it? Interesting. It sure is. Yeah. Yep. I love that. He's just like, mm-hmm. he's like, because. It's coming around. Exactly. Because up until now, Vane, I mean, he is, has always been a strategist, obviously, but he's, oh, it's Not always the same been, way. Yeah. Right. Always much more about immediate stuff. More like what mm-hmm. Cranky Quartermaster is saying. It's like, we came for the ship. We got the ship. Why are we still here? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and Vane is becoming a big picture person. And part of becoming yep. a big per- big picture person is that sometimes you try to get your quartermaster to explain to the crew why something's in their best interest. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so next we have Vane talking to Billy. Yeah, I just feel like, you know, Vane just like each each scene, he just gets better in this episode. It's just like building up and building up. Mm-hmm. So he's talking to Billy and he's, you know, he's saying to Billy, like, keep your people in line. I have to go do this thing. And then Billy's like, why on earth would I help you just so you can kill us afterwards? And I'm going to have to quote Vane. He says, uh, you know, when I leave that square with Flint, it will be to a different world than the one I entered. In that world, killing 50 strong men of NASA who can defend mm-hmm. her. What sense does that make? I love him. I love him. It's I so not, great. Isn't again, it awesome? I've talked about this before. I was not a fan of Vane that much the first time I watched this until this moment. Well, he's had a big arc. He really has. He really has. He, it's, really kind, has. it's almost like he went from an adolescent to a man. Huh. I like that. Yeah, there, there is something to that. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And Billy sees it too. You know, Billy was all about resisting him. And then when he heard yeah. that... That's when he says, you know, your plan's not going to work, but I have something that can help make it work. And that's when he gives him Billy a impressed me so much in this episode. Billy's becoming really a strategist. Well, and he's not only a strategist, but remember, he almost beat the shit out of Vane last episode. So yep. he's still got like the strength and the brawn that you don't, that you Absolutely. don't see in, say, like Silver, the mastermind. But right. then, did you see him out thinking Silver? And oh, out thinking yes. vain this episode. It's just like, yep, holy yep. shit, Billy, yep. where did you come from? Dark horse. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And yeah, it's re- I mean, and we have seen this, you know, since he's reappeared in the beginning of season mm-hmm. two. And remember I said, I was like, I don't know if I buy it, but now, but I don't really care because I love it. Like, yeah, we have seen him become more and more of a strategist and, yes. and right. And just smart about human nature. He's not, he's not as much as he's, still very pure and about his brothers and about the democracy. Right. He's not, he's become more jaded. I mean, you know, did you see? He has become more jaded. Where Uh like, like Silver's like, cool, they're going to rescue Flynn. And he's like, yeah. And then they're just going to probably kill all of us. Exactly. Well, this is the thing too, is that Billy has been a pirate for so long. He knows pirates. And so he knows them at their best. And the idealist of him sees them at their best. But now that he's becoming just so acquainted with men, with the nature of man, that's where the jadedness comes from. Not towards piracy itself, but towards just human nature. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I love that where Silver's like, wow, that's really dark. (laughs) That's really dark. (laughs) (laughs) I I just love that line. I just, that line makes me happy. <laughs> I forgot about that, but yes. It just kills me. Oh. I don't know. Something, something about the way he delivers that line just amuses yep. me to no end. It is good. Okay. So next I'm chronological- sorry. Yeah. I interrupted Vane stuff to talk about Billy. He's kind of my boy. Did we, do we need to talk more Billy stuff? Nope. That was it. I got it all off my chest. Speaking of chest. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. So next we have the trial and we have the town crier and he's using so many of our words. So many of them. Yes. Well, and it occurred to me too that this court was just more theater. Oh yeah, exactly. So All this of is it is just more theater. theater. Right. Civilizations theater. Civilization theater versus pirate theater. That's exactly right. what we're watching. Exactly. So we have battling theaters. And everyone has bought their tickets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And some of us watch it many times. No, but it's true. It is totally battling theaters. And, and Peter brings that up. So, okay. So we have the Tom C- town crier and he says, you know, who, you know, who call- he calls on the name of Flint, like who is more dangerous or scary or whatever than the name of Flint. And then he says this once fearsome animal, 
another word, another one of our animals. Words, that's right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Who's been brought down by his hubris, and his then he tells hubris. the. Yep, yep. But yeah, but the hubris is supposed to be that they came to kill the governor. Right. So this well, comes back to our question. Yeah, that, of, that's the story they're telling. Yep, isn't right. it? Right. But is it the mm-hmm. truth? Of course, it's not the truth. But that's we what there. I'm saying. Right. That's what yep. I'm saying. That this is all uh, about this thing about who's telling the truth and what is truth. Yes. And um, and then that's when Peter comes to talk to Flint. And this is one of the most satisfying moments of all black sales for me when Flint just oh? tells Peter Ash off. Uh, mm-hmm. When he says, so he's offer, trying to offer him a deal. And I think, I don't know, is he, maybe he's doing this out of compassion. Maybe he's doing it for his own sake. Maybe he's just like too hard for him to watch all of this and be confronted with his own wretchedness and horribleness. Yeah. But, but um, he makes, he makes an offer and he, and they bring out Miranda's casket and he's just so like. So awful. And expose like, her corpse to everyone oh, for ridicule. Right. Oh, right. This is before the exposure, but he says, he says, um, you know do it for her basically spare her and she'll be able to have a peaceful and honorable burial that's what she would want and then this is my favorite line is flint says Mm -hmm. she was clear about what she wanted and it had nothing to do with begging for your forgiveness yep ah yep he's very loyal to her in this episode which i really like because again we've talked about this before but he spent so long just not being good to her and he, they were just regaining their footing they right. were just no they were true. just getting there i mean i think that his not being good to her was about his own you know denial of of his past and his shame and it was oh, i think yeah. it was tied to that i mean I, I i which is no excuse i mean people should be nice to their loved ones but, but right. i think yeah. that you know what i mean like i don't think it came from a place I think he was always loyal to her, but he was so he was so um, restricted by his own shame and his own anger that mm. he wasn't able to to really express it properly. But you know, but he's he's also he's honoring he's honoring Miranda Hamilton. He's honoring Miranda ba- Barlow. But in this moment, he's honoring Miranda the pirate, pirate Miranda that you know got expressed at the last minute. Uh-huh. That's who he's honoring right there. I, and I love that. You know, I loved that last episode that she finally let it all out and that he's honoring yeah. that Miranda. And I and I yeah. really respect wow. that as well. And then he, he asks for the truth. He says, was it a bribe? Were you simply too weak? Like what made you mm-hmm. what made you betray those people closest to you? And then he says, tell me this is all about your cowardice. I could accept that. I might I forgive, forgive that. that. Mm-hmm. And this goes back, in my eyes, to what Flint said all along, that that this would That's end right. when he gives his forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Not the other way around. Yeah. And, and this is a moment where, because of his own inner strength, he brings it back to that. He brings it back mm-hmm. to saying... Let me forgive you. Put, you know, tell, if you tell me the truth, well, I yeah. will forgive you. Mm-hmm. He's not asking for forgiveness. He's, he's offering so it. Even now, he still is holding out for the possibility of reconciliation of some kind. Well, I think he doesn't want it to end this way. That's so interesting. Do you, th- you, I mean, okay, I definitely see I mean, I don't think that he ever thought that Ash was going to admit it. Right. But... Yeah, but I think a, a part of him wanted. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he wouldn't say that. It's true. I might forgive that. I mean, he could have just mm-hmm. said, "You shit. I hate you. You're such a coward. Right. You're horrible." Or even, "I could have forgiven that." He could even do right. past tense. No, that's true. He does actually he is actually offering some level of of absolving Peter Ash right. of his former. Yeah, that's you. You're totally right. You're totally right. And then he says, even at this moment, alone with a condemned man, you are unable mm-hmm. to speak the truth. And that's mm-hmm. the condemnation. That's where yeah. he's saying. And again, it all is coming down to truth. It was truth at the dinner table last last week. This idea right. that Flint would tell the truth, but Peter Ash wasn't willing to tell his own truth. Mm-hmm. There's a purity here. There's a, there's a, there's a question of moral purity that's... 
that's yeah. so different than what we think. You know, we all think of, you know, we all came into this whole story thinking of pirates as as immoral and evil and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I just feel like there's this beautiful moment, which is saying, you know, which is we've been in this process of turning all of that on its ear throughout. Yeah. And I feel like this is the moment where we're really, we're really, I don't know, reaching the highest point of that, of where really it's coming down to this, that Flint, a man who has killed so many people and done all of this stuff, there's no question that he has the moral high ground here. Yeah. He is willing to be who he is. Like this is, if anything, Mm -hmm. the moment when he is more than any other time just being himself yeah because he's kind of given up but also Mm -hmm. because everything has happened to him now like what does he have to lose anymore Mm -hmm. Uh. and peter ash who who is representing civilization for us does not have the moral high ground because what he has done from the beginning has been dishonest yeah and has also killed people. I mean, has maybe absolutely, you know, yeah, passively so, not actively so. But well, I mean, all the pirates he's hanged too. Oh, right, that's true. There is yeah. that, right? So yes, this right, this story, his story, I guess, starts with the death of Thomas. But yes, then many more active deaths, and then the death mm-hmm. of Miranda, which is, which is just so horrible. I mean, she came to him as a friend, yeah. as a person in peace, and then. Yeah, we don't need to. We don't need to. We don't need to re-experience Miranda's death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really hard for me. <laughs> it was very tragic. Yeah. Um. So. Oh, okay. And then I just want to say, I feel like there's the moment, like even this, even in this conversation, I don't feel like James has gone completely from from McGraw to Flint. The moment for me where I think it has happened is when they are throwing those fruits and vegetables or whatever they're throwing at Miranda's body. At Miranda. Yep. And he gets Gosh, super that's twitchy. That's so hard to watch. He does. I don't think we've, yep. I don't think we've ever seen him twitchier than <laughs> in that moment. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, well, and I think for me, it, it could definitely be that moment where it happens, but the line that really gives it away is when he's talking to Vane, when Vane's yeah. finally up there. Yeah. And he all says, right. so let's move along to that. We're almost okay. there. All right. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I just want to talk about the show, Daphne. Okay. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> We're almost there. It's just that whole conversation is so good. I don't want to. I know. I know. I'm okay. All sorry. Right. I'm being super controlling because I just, I love exactly how it all happened. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Okay. So let's get like quickly. I just have a little bit more like words to talk about and theater to talk about. We have Vice Admiral, <laughs> Vice Admiral Lord Kensington, who is our our um, judge, attorney. What are we? I guess there is a jury. I don't uh, even know. There is a jury. Yeah, right. There is a jury. We'll talk about that in a second. A completely so, yeah, so, rigged jury. Yeah, exactly. Completely rigged jury. Right. Mm-hmm. Another thing about truth and honesty. Uh, yes. So he he accuses flint of clawing at the very fabric of civilization that holds us together (laughs) yep and then flint says his amazing line which is i have one regret that he regrets coming here in hope of reconciliation and that reason could be a bridge we haven't talked about reason for a while but this is something Mm -hmm. that he does hold on to and then he says the line he says everyone is a monster to someone since you are so convinced I am yours, I will be it. I would like that on a t-shirt. Okay, let's do that. I would wear that. Yep. <laughs> Says the yeah. saucy divorcee. Oh my goodness. No. Mm-hmm. Um, what? It's pretty incredible. It's pretty incredible. It, is incredible. it really is. Yeah. I feel like, you know, I mean, it's falling on deaf ears and the crowd there in Charlestown, not that it, you right. know. Not that we really care so much about them because, you know, they're all goners anyway. <laughs> right. That is very true. <laughs> but I loved that this was the moment that Flint became a proper pirate. Yep. And at the moment that Flint well, became a proper right. pirate. Well, and he's right. That's all they saw him as anyway. And right. he was fooling himself all this time. He was kidding himself to yep. think that he could somehow bridge these two men, McGraw and Flint. He was always going to have to choose. 
Exactly. And this has been this thing that he struggled with. He said they called me yeah. a monster and then he saw them call him a monster. I mean, we've just, we've seen him be so oh, angry, right. so distraught. Yeah. All of these things about being a monster. And now he's just going to own it. Yeah, he's like, fine, whatever. You want me to be a monster? I'll be your monster. And that's uh. the moment when Vane comes. I just love that juxtaposition. Yeah. I'm just like... Flint's just like, I am done. I am a proper pirate. And Vane's like, uh-huh. did I hear proper pirate? Let me come help you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Although I do love how Flint looks a little unsettled when <laughs> I come to offer testimony in defense of Captain Flint. And Flint's like, uh, do what now? <laughs> Wait, this guy? Uh, can, I, can I ask for someone else, please? Stop helping, Chaz. <laughs> So, yeah, I also love the moment. There's just all these great moments. I pretty much love any moment where, like, Peter Ash is put in his place. So he's like, who are you to offer testimony? Or, like, and Vane's like, well, it's not my testimony I'm offering. It's your daughter's. (gasps) Boom. (laughs) Yeah, Sarah and I are both like, whoa. (laughs) Oh, no, she did it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah very exciting stuff i was sad that she didn't actually show up it was good to have the the journal but i did want to actually see her just because she was so amazing yes although it's true i'm glad that she was not there on the square for all that trauma so exactly but yes yeah. liz get used to it because i spent all of season three hoping that abigail would show up and sorry guys she's not going to uh it is heartbreaking she's so cool My hashtag season four make a wish is give me some Abigail, please. Give us some more Abigail. I know. I know. I really really want some more Abigail. Okay. So then, uh, right. Then we have the moment where Vice Admiral Lord Kensington tells Peter Ash, whatever, we can read some of this diary. It doesn't matter because I have stacked the jury and Flint's going to hang no matter what. Pretty Mm -hmm. horrifying. Peter seems a tad bit horrified by that. He does seem a little bit. Yeah, he's a little disturbed by that. And then they're reading the diary, and then we have what I wrote in all capital letters in my notes, the best conversation ever. Uh-huh. I love this conversation between Vane and Flint. The two of them are pretty damned cool. Oh, my God. I know. Like, these two just being just at the height of their badass selves. I love yes. it. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, do you mind if I re- read a little bit? I can't help myself. Please read I to me. I love Daphne. them. I will because I, lo- <laughs> I love my pirates. I love my pirates so much. Let's just okay. play the clip. <laughs> Seriously. So Vane says, I love this. I figured if anyone was going to make a trophy of you, it really ought to be me. Which is so cool. Yeah. So uh-huh. cool. And then Flint says... So your plan is to walk in here and read a girl's diary. <laughs> you know, you do it, and it's just so crazy. Like these two are just like they're just sparring here. They are. They're still like what, what do they call they're it? They're both chained and about to be hung and this is the conversation they're having. I love that. Yep. And then mm-hmm. Vane says more or less and then they get a little farther along. And, you know, Flint understands that there's a plan. And this is interesting. This was an interesting in my whole thing about them coming closer to each other is that Flint says, whenever this thing happens that you're about to do, don't get in my way. And Vane's answer is, whenever this, when this happens, we will move to the jetty. I don't want you getting killed steps from the gallows. And I just Uh thought that was interesting is that now Flint is the one who's all about his own agenda because he just wants to kill Peter Ash, right? He Uh wants revenge. And Mm -hmm. Vane's the one with the larger picture vision. Like he's the one who's seeing the we here. So Mm -hmm. Flint's I and Vane's we. And we have had had a complete flip from the last episode. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And then they have the most spectacular part, which is Flint talks about how they're trying not to be afraid and he says how is running going to make them af- make them be afraid and Vane asks what he suggests and he said let's remind them they were right to be afraid so cool gosh it's so badass i love it they were right to fear us yep it is so true and now we need to raise a glass for james mcgraw because james mcgraw is no longer Oh, and now we God. have just Flint. Daphne, I wasn't ready for that. Now I'm, I'm sad. I'm s- sorry. 
The but death it's... of James McGraw. Yeah. That's it. He's not looking Jeez. for really reconciliation anymore. No, no reconciliation anymore. Just burn it to the ground. Oh, hell. Yep. Vane, in his speech, talks about truth. And you can see everyone when he says, those of you who live to tomorrow or whatever he says. That's oh, like my gosh. That. So cool. Everybody gets a little nervous. They're like, what? <laughs> they, don't, they, they don't get a little nervous. When Charles Vane says something like that to you. <laughs> <laughs> And then is my yep. moment. I love this moment so much. And then he raises those chained arms. And that, what an image. Still in chains. So cool. What an image for a man that we knew grew up a slave. Yeah. To raise his chained arms and bring them down and cannons fire. That Charlestown's own cannons fire on the city. Yep. Oh my gosh. It's so Oh my cool. God. I see. I get chills just talking about it. Yeah. I really do. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, and then Flint does kill Peter Ash, and I. And then he says, mm -hmm. he says, slowly, yep. gives him a slow death so he can watch oh. Charlestown burn yep. around him. Yes, yep. yes. And that we know that was deliberate. Flint, oh, is of a soldier. course, he knows exactly. Yeah, Sarah what he's even asked me as we were sword. watching. She's like, "Oh my god, that dude's still alive!" And I was like, "Yeah." Yeah. He gets a slow death so he yep. can watch this empire that he built on their destruction exactly. crumble around him. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so perfect. And re and when before he leaves them, he says, her word will be the last word for this yes. place. Because mm. that's what she said she wanted. Yeah. She's getting it. She's not mm -hmm. alive to see it. But she's, but he, they, the pirates, her people, the people who are now, who had become her people. Yeah. We're making it happen for her. There's a lot of action scene with Flint and Bane, and that's usually not so much my thing, but it is so amazing. Just watching them, you know, make it through that city, and yeah. they're both in chains, and the two of them, the two of them with their arms chains can take on a whole city worth of soldiers. It's it true. Seems. Yep, they've got it. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, but the beautiful thing is that they're working together. Like they're completely, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like a dance they're doing that they, yeah. they end up saving each other multiple times during right. that process. Mm -hmm. Um, but the thing that's most interesting to me is this is the first time that we've seen pirates attacking civilians. This is, this is no longer raiding. This is no longer, uh, you know, taking ships for the sake of cargo. This is war. Yeah. This is war. Yeah. With all the brutality and the horror of war. Yeah. I feel like, you know, we've we've gone through such a process in these two seasons. And when Vane said a new world, he wasn't joking. Mm. Flint is a new Flint. I mean, he's fully Flint now. He's. Yeah. And the two of them, with all of their anger and all of the things that civilization did to them, are now waging war. Yes. Wow. Yeah. It's a really, I mean, that's, it was a really, it's a really big deal. Like this, you know, you see women, you see those children walk up to Flint beforehand. Like this yes. is a, this is a city full of civilians, mm -hmm. but these are civilians who all bought into, into this lie, into this world yeah. that, and, and also they're the people who threw the fruit and vegetable at Miranda. I mean, these are the mm -hmm. people like they are at war with them. Yeah. Gosh. And right. And a good example is that moment when um, they're fighting with people and one guy gets pinned against the cage. Remember the cages that we saw last episode? Yeah. One of the soldiers uh -huh. gets pinned against a cage full of, of slaves and they hold on to him so he can't fight. And yeah. Flint kills him. And then Flint opens that opens that cage and frees them. Gosh, it's so great. And of course, we also see though the woman in in yellow, who gets just demolished, just torn in half by cannon fire. So both sides, not yeah, it's not simple. Is all I mean to say. It's, not it's simple. definitely not simple. It's definitely not simple. I mean, that's I I don't think that's I don't think that's what it's supposed to be. It's not. I mean, no. it is. It is exhilarating to see Vane do that. It is exhilarating to see Flint and Vane join forces it's mm -hmm. very bittersweet to see flint truly become flint because part of you part of me was cheering for him because 
it's almost a relief for him to give up all the stuff that had been conflicting him. I mean, we'll we'll mm-hmm. see we'll see what happens with him emotionally in season three. But at least for this moment, he seems so resolved. There's mm-hmm. some aspect of that that is kind of a relief to me that he doesn't seem like two warring selves within one body. Yeah, yeah. it's not the version of James that. We wanted to see win out. We wanted we right. wanted Dimples McGraw to win, but <laughs> this just isn't yeah. that kind of story. <laughs> no, it certainly is not. Yeah. Another thing I love is when they get in that boat and they're rowing. Also, rowing as Such a team. Such a great moment. Yeah, rowing as a team, rowing away from civilization, right. out together back onto the water, the smoke right. behind them. Yeah. And then Sarah... Is there going to be a ship in that smoke? (laughs) Yes. Yes, there is. Watch out. I know. And then you hear that whistle. So cool. And then, right, and then cannon fire. And I had a funny thing happen. My computer froze when I was watching it yesterday. It froze exactly so that I could see that that first cannonball, like, straight into Rhett's belly. Oh, yeah. He's out. The end. Got his comeuppance. Yes, he did. So I was never 100% yep. sure. I, you know, I was pretty sure he died, but I would never had noticed that no. direct hit he to Red. absolutely died. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It wanted you to know. It did. My computer wanted me to know for sure. <laughs> but yeah, isn't it just so great? And they're like rowing out and the cannons are going over them. It's just... It's amazing. It's so yeah, cool. It's just, it's just, we really needed this catharsis after after everything, but all, especially it's after true. Miranda. We yeah, really did. after Miranda. We sure did. Um, okay, so then they come on the, sh- on the ship and Billy immediately... Uh, points his gun at Bane and Flint says, release those men. Yeah. And he says, I I love this line. I know what happened and I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) I'll not hold pirates prisoner on this ship. Not Mm -hmm. after today. But my favorite part is when he looks over at Bane, he's like, keep your men in line. But he says it not in the same like condescending way he would usually talk to Bane, but with like full respect that I know that you can. I know that you can keep your man in yep. line. I'm going to trust you to do it. We're going to do this thing together. Yep. It's a great line. What I wanted to bring up is that then they nodded each other. And I wanted to remind mm-hmm. everyone that in the season finale of season one, the two people who nodded each other are Flint and Gates. Oh. And that was yeah, a very right. different kind of nod, right? So this sure was, was. Yep. at the end of season one with all the turmoil and the shifting sands of season one. Mm-hmm. We ended in a place where two people who should have trusted each other were actually not in each other with a mind to betray each other, or at least one of them oh, wanted to betray. Oh, gosh, that's so good. And then now we yeah. have a nod between two people who have just become partners. Uh-huh. Wow, that's so good. I like it. I really like it. And it just it mm-hmm. just shows that we're in a different place. We're in a place of more clarity, again. It's really sad to see James McGraw lose the thing he's been trying to get all this time. And yet there's something really beautiful in James Flint saying, I'm a proper pirate. And the two of them having, you know, having the respect to nod at each other in agreement Mm -hmm. over whose job is what in this partnership that they're about to have. Uh, I love that. I love that so much. And I just, yeah, the, the, the contrast is so, so strong for me. Mm-hmm. So then uh, Billy says, uh, what's the target? And he says, <laughs> whatever's left, whatever's God, left. So good. Mm-hmm. It is. And that's when we get our ready the guns full compliment. That's right. This yeah. This from our podcast. Yay. Um, and when Flint says that Vane is so happy. Bane's just looking at Flint with such satisfaction. Mm. And Billy is not. Billy's looking pretty confused about this whole situation. Mm. And we'll just see how that plays out next season. Uh, I feel like it, that uh, that's just a little slice of stuff we need to keep an eye on. Yeah, gosh. But... The thing that's interesting here is, you know, Flint had said to Miranda last episode that that he always planned to fight. He was always he was always preparing to fight with civilization. But he was his plan was always for him to fight the battle of defense to defend NASA. Mm -hmm. And this is suddenly him waging war with civilization where he's the aggressor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yep. 
So different pirates are going to react differently to that new development. <laughs> yes, we, I'm sure. But we got to see Vane and Billy react to it. And um, yep, yeah, we'll see. We'll see where that takes everyone next season. <sighs> Pretty great, though. Um, okay, let's talk about Silver. Silver. This is the moment where where Silver becomes Long John Silver. This is when I mean, becomes... well, I, I okay. actually, I shouldn't say that because that has its own moment. But this is, this is, this is just a becomes... huge... Right. This is when he becomes physically the silver that we know from right. Treasure Island because he loses well, his Well, and he life. becomes a, a true pirate. Like, he becomes he one of the brethren. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Luke Arnold kills it in this episode. Yeah. He's amazing. He's really wonderful. It's true. So, yeah. In the beginning, Billy's talking about that he has eight votes to be quartermaster. And Silver's like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, and he talks about what he did in the last episode and that he risked himself and probably saved everyone's lives. And then he says something interesting. He said there's two kinds of quartermasters, the one yep. you're supposed to vote for and the one you want. And the one you want always wins out. Uh-huh. Last episode, we had what Vincent said about how, you know, how they all listen to yes. Flint because he says, but they, they think that he's the one who has their best interests in mind. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is what I wanted to say last episode. Like, it's really hard to... Now I can finally talk about all this because we're in the last right. episode. We've had this progression, this amazing progression of watching Silver mm -hmm. become, I think, against his will, honestly, to, in most yeah. cases, like, become more and more an integral part of this crew. Mm -hmm. And the crew definitely saw him that way. Yes. And I just feel like it's this interesting... It's this interesting cycle of, like, the crew sees him that way... And that's really inspiring him. And then he does more things for the crew. And it just, it just, mm -hmm. it just grows in this cycle of back and forth. Yes. Yeah. Which, of course, Flint talks about there at the end, at the very end. He pu puts it so beautifully. He says, the more those men need you, the more you need them. And it drives us to do the most unexpected things. And did you notice it's, that Flint said it drives us? He did say us. Yeah. This is the first. Well, that's time his quartermaster now. So if you haven't been it's buddies true. yet, you better get it friggin' figured out, guys. Yeah. yeah. It's true. But I mean, I just really felt like mm -hmm. it, this was finally, you know, they've had all sorts of dynamics, but definitely, yeah. you know, Flint obviously didn't respect Silver in the beginning. But this is a moment right. where he is grouping them together. He's seeing Silver finally, truly as his equal. So that was pretty cool. As equal, do you think? Yeah. I mean, okay, maybe not eat, but really, really close. Okay, sure. As Okay, sure. As a peer. How about that? Think about, I mean, think about him at the beginning of season two where Sil I was where just Silver thinking, is this the same dude that belly flopped? <laughs> yeah, this is the same guy who belly flopped. But even at the beginning of yeah. season two, like that was the beginning of season one, even at the beginning of season two when he was the one who volunteered to go take the the man of war. Oh, that's right. And, then they get out there Flint's and it's like, what's like, the real plan? <laughs> right. And Flint's just like, you shit. I mean, this is just, yes. they're just in a very different place than they were. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so the, so the, uh, it just, it's hard for me even to like, feel like I have all the words for everything I want to say about this. Okay. So Vane's men, after Vane leaves, Vane's men try to take Silver because stupid Vincent tried to convince them that he was the key to getting them more men to help them escape mm -hmm. although you say stupid vincent but really st stupid vincent was doing exactly what silver would have done even a couple totally of weeks true. ago you're right you're yeah right. you're right 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 you're right i'm just annoyed with him but you're right and, yeah, and actually sure. it was a pretty good plan and he he executed it quite it well. is a he, right great plan that he executed yep. really well yeah yep. and it should no, have worked totally true. except right mm -hmm. it's yep you're right um so so Silver has already heard this thing about votes for quartermaster. So mm -hmm. it's just, again, this is just growing. Like, I just... Yes. It's like we see Silver flower in a way under the love of his crew. Like, it's, it's true. So, isn't well, it? It's reminiscent, too, of that when he said, where else... Who said that? Where else can you wake Flint. up in the morning and yep. matter? That's what Flint yeah. says to him. And Flint's right. He's Flint. absolutely he right. He gets it. Mm -hmm. Flint has been a leader of men for a long time, for better and for worse, yeah. but he does understand this. Um, yeah. So then when, when Bane's men try to take Silver, all of the crew stands up. Mm-hmm. And Billy says, that's our brother you have there. 
and yeah, I just I don't know. I always like if if we if we believe Silver in his story, like <clears throat> think about the guy who was you know the orphan, the grifter, the loner. Yeah, like he suddenly he so has community now. He yeah. didn't really ask for it, and no. yet, and yet he didn't ask for it. But it's so obviously inspiring to him. Like then when mm -hmm. Cranky Quartermaster says his plan. And he says, uh, give me a list of 10 men, 10 men. We've had a list of 10 men before. This is so yes, obviously have. in contrast That's to right. Dufresne. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he wants a list of 10 men. It's the same situation because Silver says, well, what happens to the men not on that list? And, you know, cranky quartermaster, deadpan. We know right. what's going to yeah. happen. So it's the exact same thing is you can save 10 men. For your own, you know, yourself and 10 men and mm -hmm. the rest of the men will suffer. And now Silver's not willing to take that bargain. He won't do it. And he I love that, it. how he's like almost disappointed himself or at least surprised oh, by himself he's... where he's just like, right. oh, damn it. I can't I do know. it now. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And he's like, what is he? He's like sniffing or coughing or something. Like he's really like, he's almost physically trying to resist himself yes. doing it. Uh -huh. But I, I just love that it's 10 men. I love that it's 10 men. The Dufresne took that yeah, bargain right. and Billy rejected him for it. Yep. And Silver doesn't take that bargain. And mm -hmm. Billy's the one who kills Cranky Quartermaster. Again, Billy just being my hero in this episode. Yes, He's so absolutely. Cool. But also Billy, again, Billy, we said this a long time ago. Billy is our audience surrogate. Billy is the one who yeah. chooses. He's the one who chooses who's in power. From the very first mm. episode, Flint needed him to be yeah. the one to. I, I just love this. I just love. I I love this contrast between Dufresne and Silver in this moment. Yeah, right. And with getting community, there are consequences. And for Silver, ah, uh, the huge, consequences are huge so great. Consequence. Yeah. Oh um, my gosh. I, I forgot that that happened in this episode. I just oh, forgot man. that he lost his leg in this episode. Yeah. And it was another thing Sarah and I both, you know, he lifts the axe. We're like, oh, no. Yeah. Like, you know it's coming as soon as you see it. But And he has that great line when there's the banging on the door. It's the yes. first time he says, my men. It which is. we've been waiting for. Yeah. I know. I love it so much. Okay, I'm going to have to read that. Okay, go ahead. Cranky Cornermaster gets upset. He said, the question you should be asking yourself is where are his keys to one of his men? And has he seen them since the he took me from my men? Took me from my men. Yep. And that's it. Which shows so such faith in them, too. Oh, so great. I mean, he is a part of this crew. That's mm -hmm. it. They are his yep. men. He's in so much pain. And yet he can just just be like my guys they got my back like yep. you're in trouble because of my men oh man so good for me as as exhilarating as the whole thing with Vane and Flint is for me this is the moment that's most exciting in this episode because it's just it is really cool this was the moment I mean, even though we see silver changing so much over the past two seasons this was the moment where I was like damn they're doing something really special with this character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are. Uh, it's incredible. And think about it. He's, you know, his whole plan was to get the gold and run away from them. Yes, I know. And now I he's know. going to be dependent on them. During the operation, Muldoon says to him, the crew will look after you. Yep. Well, and none of them would leave, remember? He, none of them would like, leave. He was like, I can have them all go. I only need three or four guys. Right. And the crew's like, we're not going anywhere. I know. You're our guy. Mm, it's beautiful. It's, it is. It's very beautiful. It's so, again, black sails, bittersweet. You yes. Know, sil silver finds purpose. Silver finds community. And the price he has to pay is very ah, steep so for it. Big. Yeah. Yep. But that's it. He 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 sacrificed in a way that you know we ha we haven't even seen. You know, this is a level of sacrifice. The person that was the most for himself. Yep. So Gosh. deliberately sacrificed for his people. And when he says, "I'm sure we've all seen worse," <laughs> there's oh, just like God. silence around the room as they all look at each other. I know. Oh no. Yeah. It's I bad. know. It's really so heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, uh, then he... Before anesthesia, he, just give him rum? Are you oh kidding God. me? All I the know. rum in the world can't I help. know. I can't. Yeah. No, that's that's beyond that's beyond imagining what people right. went that's through the in these scenario. situations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yes. Mm. It, yes, it, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is what nightmares are made of. Um, yep. So, yeah, so he wakes up without his leg. Uh-huh. Obviously, much time later because he asked Flint where they were. Gorgeous, gorgeous office. Dad, gum, or captain's quarters. It's not really an I office, know. but anyway. Amazing. I know. That was Sarah's first time seeing that, so she was mouth agape. Right. As you should be. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, and the light, I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful it's scene. Beautiful. The light is beautiful. It's a beautiful scene. It mm-hmm. really is. Um, and there's a softness to Flint. There is. Well, which is very for a little interesting bit. considering. Yep. Well, I just mean, considering what he just came from, mm-hmm. you don't have a drunk, jaded, well, no, pissed he's, off. He's, he's joking around. He's yeah. like smiling at him. He's like, oh, the crew, you know, like it's almost like children before a birthday party. Like the crew, the crew really wanted to tell you. So act surprised. Yes, like act surprised. Uh huh. Um, yeah. I mean, what I think about that is honestly, is like back to what I said. Like this is. He's not conflicted right now. He's, you know, mm-hmm. I'm sh- you know, he's mourning. He's that's sad. That's a really he's, good he's, point. He's not conflicted anymore. Oh, he's, that's a good point, Daphne. He's just, uh, at least in this moment, not making any promises yeah. for the future, but right. at least in this moment, he's just Flint and that might be a relief to him. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Right. And he's talking to Silver about NASA, about the crew, like mm-hmm. he just gets to be a pirate captain right now he gets to be a proper pirate without Uh uh-huh without the weight of having been you know think about it for the past 10 years since he met gates he's been kind of pretending to be a normal pirate captain but with this hidden agenda hidden Mm. agenda's gone he just can be a captain he can just be with his men and be as the be the leader and yeah and i think he is impressed with silver too yeah (laughs) who <laughs> wouldn't be uh Flint. yeah absolutely <laughs> well okay fair enough fair enough but right yeah. finally mm-hmm. finally he's finally he's properly impressed with silver <laughs> mm-hmm. it only took take you know losing your leg <laughs> right <laughs> this is the moment i talked about when the writing was so great when he says that all these people are specks of dust suspended in the air until a strong enough gust comes and rearranges everything like that's so beautiful and poetic. That's a difficult line to deliver without sounding yeah. like you're you know, just reading just, poetry, right? Exactly. But he does it so. Gosh, it's just spot on. It's very. I know. You just accept it. You just completely accept it. It's so lovely. Damn. Yeah, you accept it as this is the way that Flint would speak. Yes. Uh huh. Gosh. So, uh, so then we have at the very end where Silver tells Flint about the Urca Gold. Sort of. I really want to talk about that. So, right. So he says that that Vincent, uh, whatever, that Vincent confessed to him about what Uh Vincent had done about lying and selling it to another crew. And Flint is so distressed. Like, so distressed. He's not just angry. Like, angry, you know, we've seen Flint be angry. I mean, for me, it seemed like he's, like, really, really hurt. Like his voice catches, like yeah. I mean, was it tied to I mean, Miranda? You think that it would have kept him from making that voyage to Charlestown? That that was his plan A, plan B uh, never would have happened. Oh, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Well, that was my he, reading of it, right? I except mean, that he he decided to do the Charlestown thing before he found out that the gold was gone. Hmm. That that's true. He did because he then he gave it up. I don't know. Maybe it was just the betrayal. Maybe it was just yeah, exactly. That's what I thought was that he's in this place where he gets to just be captain and feel good about his crew yeah. and this whole story with Silver and joining with the other crew and feeling good about pirates and all of this yeah. and then then that hearing about sense. this betrayal. Um, it was very moving. Like I can't really explain it. It's very moving. Right. And I remember being mm-hmm. terrified for Silver in that moment. Yeah, because he was right to lie. Yeah, he was right to lie. He was also right. Like what he's kind of pretending suddenly he's kind of like overwhelmed with pain so that he can't yes. really like meet his eye. <laughs> I love yep. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love I love his like suddenly like 
I so faint. <laughs> I, uh, my leg hurts. I don't. I don't know. Talk to you tomorrow, boss. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just found it really interesting. I mean, because I feel like it was a really good reminder to us, like, of how sometimes Flint is so imbalanced. Yes. You know what that I mean? Like that. You're right. Yeah. yeah. I don't 100% mm-hmm. know what was going on there, but I know what effect it had on me, which was terror. Yeah. Yep. And so I feel like that is what I needed to get out of it was not necessarily understanding what, why he's so upset, but what he is, you know capable of like i was terrified Mm -hmm. i was ready for him to just like i don't know grab a knife and kill silver like because he says he's like he told you this like if you know it seemed like yeah i thought he was gonna call him out on it exactly Mm -hmm. i just felt like it was kind of maybe good for us right at the end to see a little bit of crazy man flint like the you know that we've had glimpses of and uh and that's that wow this is, yeah, it's good. It's such a great, they just put everything in place so beautifully for season three. And season three is so fascinating. I, just, I, can't, I can't wait to get into season I, three. Because I, I remember that every season got better. And yeah. season two has been so much fun. And I, I, there are little things that I remember about season three, of course. But I'm so looking forward to jumping into it again. I really am. Tons uh, okay. of brilliance, I'm sure. So let's just talk about our, our very last scene when, when Flint says, you know, what crew bought it? What what crew has you know got the gold or whatever had the information, and then we oh see, yeah, and then we see uh, the little boy come and call Max, and Max comes uh-huh. and talks talks to Jack and Anne, and Jack's being a little coy. Jack is adorable. We get the walrus back, the Leviathan. <laughs> we'll put like we'll paste an extra name on there uh, for Liz's sake, but I love I love Jack's line. I love when he says, "Do you want to see something shiny?" It's so great, isn't it? Perfect. It's I want to see something so, shiny. Yes. It's so it's a perfect. great line. It's so much fun. It's a great the, ending to the season. It really is. It really, really mm-hmm. is. And it's great. It's just like, okay, now, you know, we have all these elements that are gonna be great for the next season. And yep. and I just and I love it. They closed everything up and yet they also left all these beautiful openings for speculation yeah. about season three. I remember mm-hmm. being so excited about season three when season two yeah. ended. Well, so much change for so many people. Because again, James McGraw is dead. Like we started season two all about James McGraw and learning who he was. And then we killed him just as surely as we killed Miranda. Pretty and much. And then Jack starts like bottom of the barrel. Poor Jack is just like literally being pissed on. And now here he is, king of the world, with two ships full of Spanish gold. And <laughs> Vane started, um, well, just just himself, right? Just like right. screwing women and holding the fort and just being a badass. And now here he is playing on a team and and seeing the big picture. So it's been a huge silver. I mean, silver now is part of the... Yeah, silver. Silver, I think, has had the biggest changes. Right. And Anne, you know, finding herself. Yeah. You know, becoming the person who could have that conversation with Jack that she just had, which is Mm. it's just not a conversation that she would have been capable of of doing, you know, at the beginning of the season. She just she didn't understand herself well enough to even say those things that she said. And and I'm yeah, Anne's the person I'm just like so happy for her. Yeah. Well, let's save all this for the wrap up with uh, with Lauren Sarner that's coming up. We have so much to say then. Uh, in the meantime, let's do thesis statements, right? Is it time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is time. Ready to guns. Full compliment. Okay, Liz, do you have a thesis statement for me? All right. I'm going to go. My thesis statement is they were right to fear us. That is a good one. That was one of my contenders. Okay. I have... One gets used to a state of affairs. It's easy to forget they're all just transitions. Mm, that is a good one. I like yours better. I think you okay. win. Okay. Yep, that one's better. I wanted to do your line just because it's so satisfying and I love it. It is very satisfying. Yeah. But, but yours, I think, harkens more to the thesis statement of this particular episode. I think it's better. Yeah. Okay. Yay. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> you win. <laughs> transitions. Yay, transitions. All right, Liz, we have some people who got our thesis statement last week. Actually, our thesis statements, because we had two. That's right. We, we had two. two. Uh-huh. 
Okay, so we had a new contestant at Rival Piper. Actually, got at Rival. Piper. I know, isn't that a great name? Rival Piper is already a pirate name, <laughs> <laughs> but I will work with it. <laughs> and at Rival Piper, actually, got both of them. Like. So I don't know if, no I don't know if that's way. legitimate. I mean, we don't usually let people tweet too, but she happened to tweet both of them. So I just thought like we should, we should notice. That's doubly good then. All right. So they got both of them. So we're going to give her double barrel bang. Oh, I like it. Okay. That sounds. Two shots fired. Two shots nailed it. Double barrel that bang. Sounds I like it. perfect. Okay. And the next is sue sue got it again sue where does that put sue she was our she was our bosun so now sue is so she's a quartermaster yes, now sue is now also quartermaster well done sue so so we have two quartermasters no that's okay we have as many ships that's as we what want i, was gonna say. I think show. i think i think <laughs> you and i are gonna have to split ships and you get one quartermaster and that's i get fine. the other okay excellent Okay, All right. so yeah, so we have Quick Click Clark, who's a quartermaster, mm -hmm. and Silver Sue O'Shandy. Okay. I like it. And the last one is Jen, who I believe, does she already have a pirate name? Jen also. She was red-handed Jen, true. so she is promoted to All bosun. All right, Jen, you're a bosun. This is going well. Way to go, y'all. You're making me so we're proud. Having, we're really just having an awesome crew. I'm really pleased with this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, so, yeah, we are going to next week have our season two wrap with Lauren Sarner. We're really excited. Mm -hmm. uh, remember to give us reviews. We definitely need them. Uh, reviews yes, are on iTunes. Super... Helps other people find yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. Reviews are super helpful so that other people can find us and ultimately, you know, maybe help other people find black sales, which is something that we really want to have yes. happen. And, um, and that's it. Wow. End of season two. <laughs> so crazy. Okay, so until next week, from Common Room Radio, I am Liz Stevens. And I'm Daphne Olive. Fathoms Deep is a Common Room Radio production. For more information and access to other programs, please visit us at commonroomradio.com. To show your support, pledges of as little as a dollar a month can be made to patreon.com slash commonroomradio. Join the conversation by using the hashtag FathomsDeep and follow us on Twitter at BlackSalesCast. We ask that you keep your tweets respectful and positive and please avoid spoilers. If you have more to say, we want to hear it in all its spoiler glory. Email us at podcast at commonroomradio.com with Fathoms Deep in the subject line. Thanks for listening. I love all of that. <laughs> Good. Don't cut it. I won't. Won't cut it. <laughs> won't cut this either. <laughs> yes, you will. Yeah. I will. <laughs> <All right. laughs>